Hi everyone, my name is Ohi John and I'm a consultant at IBIS Inc. Thank you for joining me in this call today. Today I'll be going over how to use Integration Manager for basic SOP integration. Integration Manager enables you to integrate various financial data into GP. The tables associated with the selected destination are parsed, checked, and verified by Integration Manager to ensure the data integrity and financial validity of the in incoming data. I'll be going over the advantages of using Integration Manager for an integration. Integration Manager is business object oriented. The business logic and table groups within Integration Manager allows you to use GP default values and settings as if the entries were keyed directly into the system. Data validation follows the Microsoft Dynamics GP integrity rules to ensure that all data is validated before entering the system. Default required fields provide defaults for many key fields allowing source data to be minimized. Translate data allows existing data to be translated to correspond to GP values. For example, you can translate numeric payment terms from an existing system into alphanumeric payment terms in GP in one step. Integration Manager allows you to both edit and update master records such as customers and accounts. Data restrictions create a restriction on a field in the source file to filter the data to be integrated. For example, you can restrict the data to a specific data range. Integration Manager is ODBC compliant. With the advanced ODBC option, you can create a SQL statement to select data from the data source. It accepts a simple ASCI source file such as a .txt file or .csv file for the source data. Before we begin, we need to make sure that you have the security access for the GP module to which you are importing. In today's webinar, we will be doing a SOP integration, so we need to make sure we have access to all of the SOP-related windows in GP. The user must also have administrator privileges of the workstation, and the user must be assigned to a security role that contains a security task with permissions to the integration site enabler, which I'll show you how to do in the next slide. To make sure that you have access to the integration site en enabler, mm -hmm. go to GP, Tools, Setup, System, and Security Task. For the product, select Microsoft Dynamics GP. For the type, Microsoft Dynamics GP Import. In the series, select Integration Site en Enabler. Make sure that this Integration Site Enabler box is checked. To create a basic integration, this is the overall guideline in creating one. It starts by naming the integration, then you add all of the source files related to your integration. Again, this can be a .txt or .csv file. Once you uploaded the source files, you have to define relationships between the sources if there are multiple sources. In today's webinar, we will be uploading multiple source files. Then we need to tell Integration Manager where in GP all of this data is going, so we select a destination. Then we create the destination mappings. This is where we connect the source data to the destination. Then we save the integration, run it, and examine the integration results. The good thing about Integration Manager is that if an integration fails, it will give you the reason why. For example, if you imported a document number that already exists in GP, the integration will fail and the integration results will let you know. Now that we went over the overall, overall guidelines, let's do an integration. So you can open up integration through GP by going to Tools, Integrate, and Integration Manager. And for whatever reasons, if this um, integration manager and the run integration is grayed out, then you're, you probably had some um, problems with the installation or you have a registration problem. And if you have any questions with that, um, you can uh, please jot it down and send me an email. So I'm going to open up integration manager. So we're going to create a new integration. So click this icon and we have to name it. and add a description. Click apply. Okay. So now that we named the integration, we're going to add the sources. So I'm going to show you what my source files look like. 
So I originally created this in um, Excel. And we're going to have three sources. One is the header information, which contains what type the invoice is and the customer ID, type ID, doc number, date. And it has an item information and the distribution. And what I did was I split this out into three separate um, text files, which are over here. The text files of my three sources, the items. These are the distributions. Okay, so now we're going to add these sources into Integration Manager. So what you do is you come over to the Add Source icon, and because this is a text source, we're going to click the Text folder, and we're going to define a new text. So I'll start by uploading the header information first, so I'll call it header, and add a description. I'm going to use this Browse button to locate my file. And then this is a um, tab delimiter file, so I'm going to select that, and I'm going to check that the first row contains all of the column names. So we, if we go over here to the columns tab, um, it populates all of the columns from my source, so we know that Integration Manager picked it up. And if, if you have any columns that you do not want to include in the integration, just uncheck the show box. And now this is important. Um, so between the three sources, the document number is a key field because that's in all of the three sources. So I'm going to check the is key box. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to add the second source. So go over to the text, define new text, and we'll call this the sub um, line, the items. and click the browse button to find my file. Again, this is a tab, a dot text file, so I'm gonna click tab and make sure that this first row contains column name is checked. Go to the columns and it populated all of my columns from this file and I'm gonna check that the document number is a key column. And click okay. And then you get this um, pop-up whenever you have more than one source. And basically what it is saying that I need to establish a relationship between the sources, which we will do later. So click OK. And add my last source. It's a text file again. Define new text. And this one is the distribution. So. And we're going to locate the file. And this is first row contains column names. Click columns. And we're going to click that the document number column is key again. Click OK. Uh, let me try again. Okay, so sometimes um, Integration Manager will act weird and you get a pop-up like that and you can just try again and adding in the source. So now that we have our three sources in, we're going to establish a relationship. So we come over here to this icon and click Relationships. And this um, window shows all of the columns that are in my three sources. And as we've done earlier, we said that the dot number is a key field in all of these three sources, so we're going to use that to, um, to create a relationship between these three sources. So the header, the header window is what we call the, um, the parent, and then the items and the distribution is a child. So we're going to um, drag the document number into the document number into the SOP items source, and we're also going to do it in the distribution source right here. And um, the arrows point to the child relationship. So now that we've established the relationship, um, we are ready 
to do the destination mapping. So we come over, oh, actually we have to select a destination. And this is where we um, tell integration manager where all of this data is going to go into GP. And so because in this example, we're doing a stop integration, we're gonna select that um, in GP, this is a sales transaction and that's our destination. And so now we're ready to do the destination mapping. So we come over here to the mapping icon and we maximize it so we can see everything. And this is where, um, this is the bulk of integration manager. It basically ties our source data into what's in GP. And um, this part can be a little bit tedious. So if we come over here to the sales transaction, um, this is a column, these are the columns that are in GP. And then we're gonna tell integration manager where in our source file um, the information will be coming from. So we're gonna select use source file and then we're gonna select the source. And if you look over here at this drop down menu, it displays all of the three sources that we have. And we'll start off with the header. So um, I forgot what it was. So the type, so it wants to know where in our source file the type information will be coming from and I'm gonna select it. Then with the type ID again, we're gonna click source field like type ID, document number, use source field, number, and the date. The date was in our source file, so we're gonna select that. Um, and for this site, I did not have this site information in my um, file, but what you can do is you have the option to use whatever GP defaults, and so you can select use default. And again, for the batch ID, I don't have the batch ID information in my file, but I need one in order to do the integration. So I'm gonna use constant and I'm gonna type in what I want my batch ID to be. And so um, the batch ID is I am test. And then the customer ID, that information will be coming from my source. I'm gonna select that. And then for the rest, the customer name, customer PO, um, and there's a whole bunch other, I'm just gonna set it as default because um, again, that's the great thing about integration manager is that it knows what GP wants and it can default it easily. Okay, so now that we have the header information, we're gonna go over to the distributions over here to the top left. Mm -hmm. We're gonna select um, the account number and we're gonna select, um, we're gonna tell integration manager that we want to pull that information from our source. So this is in um, distribution and we're going to select the distribution account. Okay, and the distribution type is in our source again. Distribution type, debit amount, use source, debit amount, credit amount, um, we don't want it to default because we have it in our source field, so we're going to set that. Okay, and distri distribution reference, um, we're just setting that as default. And then now we're ready to um, tie in the items. So go over here to the items folder, and then we're going to put in our item number. And again, the item is in um, the item source file, so we have to come over here to this drop down window and select SOP items pick the item number column. Unit of measure, we're gonna use default, which is each in GP. Quantity, we have this information, so we're gonna pull it from our data. Unit price is in our, in our source. And item description, extended price, all of that, we'll just default that in. Okay, so now we're ready, because um, what we did was we defined our source and we selected a destination and we're telling GP that we want all of this to go into sales order processing. And then we set a relationship between all of the sources and we did the destination mapping and now we're ready to run. So um, before you run, you need to make sure that you don't have any um, windows open in GP. You should be logged into the company that you want the the data to go into and that's how integration manager knows where to put all the 
um, data, but you don't want any additional windows open, otherwise the integration manager won't work. So we're gonna make sure that we don't have any windows open in GP. We're gonna go back to integration manager and then click run. And then you get this pop-up information that says you must save a new integration before you can run it. Do you wanna save and click yes? And it says, I get an error message saying the integration cannot run because of the following problem. Must provide source field value for the use source field on distribution account number. And I don't know why this has been happening to me. So go to distribution and we'll just select the source again. Account number. Distribution account. And I'm probably gonna get one more error. Um, must provide source field for the items number. So we'll go back to items. Items. And then we should be able to run it. Okay, so this is the, um, the error message box that integration manager provides. And if for whatever reason, the integration doesn't go through because there's a duplicate um, document number or there's an item that's not in GP but that the item number is in your source um, it will give you all of that in this log and it'll tell all that information and the integration will fail and our integration went through successfully as you can see right here and so now we're going to go into GP to make sure that our integrations went in so I'm going to open up GP and again, we did a stop integration, so we're gonna come over here to sales. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, but the batch that we created for this integration was IM test. So we're gonna open up the batch. And it looks like two transactions went in. So we'll look at the transactions. And um, let me show you the original data to verify that everything went in. So the customers were advanced 0001, the document number is 5252, and the customer ID is advanced 0001, the document number is 5252, and it shows that our item went in with the price that we indicated, and if we go over here to the distributions window, it automatically populates the distributions as well. So our integration worked. Save it. And again, if the integration fails, um, you'll get an error message um, that lets you know what went wrong. And so you can go back to your data. You can go back to your data and fix whatever you need to fix. So for example, if, um, if I typed in the customer ID incorrectly, I can fix it. And then what I can do is I can go into um, my integration and go to my source and then click refresh columns and it'll pick up whatever changes you made and um, and so integration manager is ready to do another um, integration and so that is basically all we have for today's um, webinar it's a it's a very basic tutorial on how to do a stop integration um, and if you have any questions um, please feel free to email me. My email address is ojohn at ibisinc.com. So again, if you have any questions, thank you so much for joining me on this call. Um, have a great day.